Hey everybody, it's Greg and Janet with Strange RV Tours and today we are just outside of Tacopa, California at a very unusual house. This home was the home of Paul Watkins, also known as Little Paul in the Manson family. So let's go check it out and we'll give you some more details about him and we're going to have to watch out for these biting flies. So it's going to be fun. Join us. <laughs> Hey everybody. Hey everybody, it's Greg and Janet. We're coming to you from Tacopa, California, out in the desert. Today we're at an unusual location. We are at the ruins of Paul Watkins home, also known as Little Paul from the Manson family. So we're going to check it out and join us. It's going to be fun. All right, this is what is left of Paul Watkins homestead. He died, whew, I guess it's been at least 20 years ago. But nobody's lived in this home since he was here, so anything that remains here is probably his, or was. There's a bunch of stuff out here. Got an outdoor bathroom here. Let's go check this place out. We have been looking for this house for, oh goodness, 15 years. This must be that stone structure you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, we finally found some video of this place and it had this stone structure in it. So that's how we knew this was the right house. We'll walk around and check this place out. See if we don't get snake bit. Paul Watkins was Charlie Manson's second in command. Although Paul never had anything to do with any of the violence. He actually testified against the Manson family at trial, I believe. But this is uh, where he raised his family, his wife Martha and him. The, one of their daughters, I believe it's their oldest daughter, is uh, a um, New York Times bestseller, author, best-selling author. Be careful, Jan, there's nails and stuff. Yeah. But this is uh, where Paul lived. Lots of nails. Wow. Looks like this used to be a bathroom here. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. Wow. The little Paul was... Uh, one of the better looking members of the uh, Manson family, Charlie, actually used him to secure girls. He would uh, turn little Paul loose, tell him to go pick up some fine young girls to bring back to the, to the spawn ranch. This is creepy. And uh, Paul, like I said, never, never had anything to do with the violence of the family. He was more of, he was a gentle hippie, basically. He was a good guy. Um, but looks like this used to be an oven, possibly, or a fireplace. Don't know. But he had a big screen TV here at one time. <laughs> this must have been the main living room then, yeah. So, boy. Not much left. No. And he had no. his two daughters and Martha. Yeah. See if we can't see what all else is here. Wow, that portion of the house over there was just pushed over. Still got some cranberry sauce there in cans. <laughs> really? Yeah, got a bunch of cans in there. Wow. Let's see.
Amazing. Wow. Christmas lights. Yeah. Ray Charles. Modern Sounds and Western Music. That was a that was a big time album, man. Soap is moving away from us. We'll do some more exploring here around the property. See what all's out here. Well, there's not much left. Are those shingles? Looks like it. Looks like there may be something over there too in the trees. Let's see. I should have wore long pants. Now Paul had a rock shop at one time where he sold rocks that he would scavenge, scavenge in the desert and he was also the honorable mayor of Death Valley. So he was a well-known and well-liked person out here. He uh, went up to Barker Ranch. Um, Charlie had him go up to Barker Ranch to uh, watch the place when the majority of the rest of the family was down at Spawn Ranch. And while he was up there, another miner came into Barker Ranch and started staying in one of the outbuildings next to the uh, Barker main Barker building. His name was Paul Crockett. And Paul Crockett started asking Paul Watkins questions about Charlie Manson and the Manson family. And he never would tell him that everything that uh, Charlie and the, man and the family were telling him was uh, garbage. But he would ask him questions like, do you really believe that? Do you really believe what they're telling you? Do you really believe there's going to be a race war and that blacks are going to take over the earth and uh, kill all of the white people and and Paul said when he started thinking about it it started making sense to him that maybe the Manson family was wrong you know, maybe uh, maybe this uh, Paul Crockett this uh, uh, what'd you call him um, this man who knew about Scientology, similar to way, the way Charlie did, um, maybe he was right. Maybe there wasn't going to be an oncoming war and that, that uh, was going to be the war to end all wars. And, and that's kind of what got uh, Paul Watkins on the, the straight and narrow path and getting out of the Manson family and getting away from them. And uh, it's a good thing. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't going to end well for... Paul Watkins had he stayed with the family at that time. But Paul was known to be Charlie's second in command. So he was uh, high up on the, on the family list.
so many strange things to see. You, know, it's, you have to wonder you know, how some people turn bad and end up uh, in prison and others get their lives turned around and go on to leave to live um, happy happy normal lives and uh, raise children and shoot one of them turned out to be a New York Times bestseller there's his uh, <laughs> there's his uh, uh, temperature gauge his thermostat so strange walking through this place and it just doesn't seem like it should be in pieces like this just it still seems to me like the Manson murders just happened uh, a few years ago but no So we're back outside the property. I have some shirts there. Boy, when the BLM came through, they did just push everything out, didn't they? Yeah. There's the Bible. Goodness. I wonder if there's any copies of Helter Skelter in here. Baby sitting with Buzz, Buzz Clifford, Unchained Melody. Bibles. Boy, you had a lot of reading material. Yeah, tons. It's part of the carpet. Donna Summer. Donna Summer, journey to the center of your heart. I don't know what the B-side was. Look, you still got the player deal in the middle of it. ABBA. Uh, really? Yeah, ABBA and who else? That's this one. Tammy Shaw, Sing for the Day, and Renegade. Sticks. Okay, it was sticks. Okay. Tommy Shaw then. Hmm. Yeah. Western book. book. Or mold too. Red dirt, marijuana, and other tastes. <laughs> Look at it. Yeah. The man who fell to earth. No telling what that could be. There's another one of them here, though. Part of a ceiling fan. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah.
Yeah. Somebody who was involved in such ruckus, even though he wasn't a, you know, a major player in any of the bad stuff that happened, but it's still amazing that he can live out the rest of his life out here in the desert and just be uh, left to himself. On the way down here, we spoke to one of his neighbors. And his neighbor said he used to talk to him on a regular basis and that he was a good guy. I've always heard that about Paul. Speaker. Yeah, it's a speaker. I don't know. Heater. Still heater. Yeah, it's a ceramic heater. It's like somebody had fixed up a slide. slide there for his kids, probably Paul, I'm sure. What a place, huh? Yeah. Man. Lots of stuff around here like this. That house, that room over there is completely cut off from the rest of the house. That's a very small place. Yeah. I wonder if this other foundation was like a garage or something. I don't know. Workshop. A lot to look at here. My goodness, I've never seen orange juice come in a can before. Is this a big can? Yeah. Boy, there's not much left to your place, Paul. Yeah, it's right over, down over in there if you want to see it. Lots of, be careful, there's lots of nails like yeah. that one. Yeah, I noticed. Wow. Texan and that kind of stuff. Like Albertson's apple juice. Dang. All kinds of stuff in there. It had to be a fireplace. Something. Yeah. It looks like it was pushed over. This is not the way it sat. It sat sitting up. Yeah. It was pushed right over on yeah. his back. Right. But yeah, it was a fireplace. Okay, what's your step? It's, it's a shame. The place has just been smushed for no reason. Mm. The neighbor told us that the uh, government BLM, I guess, showed up and kind of pushed the house over, destroyed it, so I could, probably so nobody else could squat. squat. Yeah. The land's being taken over by the BLM.
Bugs are terrible. You use restroom before we leave? <laughs> no, thanks. So they might crawl up and bite me. So many artifacts here. It looks like uh, anything that would have um, had any ties to the Manson family or to uh, the 1960s are pretty much gone. I have to excuse my sniffling, guys. It's uh, very, very dry out here. It's messing with my sinuses. Sorry. Yeah, lots of uh, hose, lots of hosing. Got an RV toilet there. <laughs> what it looks like, huh? Seafarer, must come out of a boat. Okay guys, this is Lil Paul Watkins' previous home. Um, and we had a blast searching through all the rubble, but it is a shame that's in this condition. But if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe if you could, and hit the little bell for notifications because we're doing this kind of stuff all the time. So, um, and what else? Share. Share. Right. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye bye.